Welcome to Crema Media's Polity. I'm Brad Doubleman. With me in the studio, I have Yulisa Dwane of Equal Education to speak about the requirements for an improved education system in South Africa. Welcome, Yulisa. What does Equal Education advocate? Equal Education is a movement of learners, parents, and uh, teachers, and communities um, to advocate for a quality education and also er eradicate inequality in education. What is the current state of literacy in South Africa? SACMEP 2, which is a study done in sub-Sahara countries, shown that South Africa took the ninth place in the last place of the literacy results. So we are not doing good as a country. Um, countries like Mozambique and Zimbabwe are doing better than South Africa. Now what is the government doing to rectify the situation in terms of policy and regulations, if anything? The Minister of Education said we should go back to the basics where we teach our young people how to read and write. And in addition to that, and also teach critical skills uh, like analysis as well. But the main problem came with OB, the introduction of the new curriculum called OBE. And it is this curriculum that crippled many of the majority of the kids in South Africa, mainly the black and colored um, working class children of this country. Tell us about your campaign for a library at every school. We started a campaign last year calling for a national policy that will deal, that will deal with the issues of infrastructure in South Africa. And we said the, the starting point should be providing libraries each, in each and every school in South Africa. And with the research done by the education department, and they call it a NEAMS report, they reported in 2007 that 7% of the school in the whole country had functional li libraries. That means libraries um, that are functioning. And it is about 19,000 of the schools that do not have functional libraries. And when we do complain as a country that our matriculants are failing to, um, to get into university or to get uh, the 40% as the pass rate for uh, the entrance level for university and technicons, uh, we don't take into account that there is a huge gap of inequality between those schools that do afford um, to pay for their own uh, libraries to be stocked and those schools that do, do not have those things. Most of the no-fee schools and even the schools that do ch charge small amounts of fees are not able to stock their own libraries they're not able to even provide computers for everyone in the schools. And also science kits, laboratories. Sometimes you do have a room that is allocated as a library or a room that is allocated as a com computer uh, science room or a science laboratory room. But those rooms are still empty. They're not used because there is, uh, there, there, uh, there is no material for, for, for learners to use. So in, in the issue of libraries, we don't have librarian posts that are created in a policy in order for provinces to employ um, librarians and pay li librarians. And also in order for government or the treasurer to allocate funding, there must be concurrence between the Ministry of Education and the Minister of finance in order for, for finance to, to fund or for example they should at least have we should at least have that political commit, commitment from the Minister of Education that says I commit myself to make sure that there are libraries in, in, in each and every school in South Africa mostly the areas that do not have even resources for example like public or community libraries or community libraries that do function. 
And what are the key elements that your campaign advocates for a national policy on libraries? We advocate for a national policy on school libraries that will provide for a library in, in each and every school in South Africa. And we know that this is a dream and it is a target, but it is affordable. It can be done. And we have proven through the research that we've done that it will cost about 7.9 billion to build um, libraries ar across the country for the, tw so the 19,000 um, schools that do not have library rooms or library centers in South Africa. So it is possible, it is affordable, and that only amounts to a percent of the um, total national budget of the education department. So if there is a commitment, it can be done. So the second element will be a creation of um, librarian posts or library administrators posts within those libraries. And in absence of a librarian, you will not have a well-functioning library because you need someone to look after the stock and make sure that the materials or the books are, um, are updated and the information is relevant and we don't want to be looking at um, information that was written in 1962 that is not relevant to the curriculum that is being taught today. And yes, there are classic books, but we need even those classic books to be at those libraries docked and also we need proper information for young people. Um, a third element which I think is critical is operational funding for those libraries that there must be funding allocated by the Ministry of um, Education and the Ministry of Finance that will go towards uh, buying materials and also keeping up updating the information in the libraries across the country. But that funding would be, will amount to, it will actually be a small amount to what is expected to, um, for, for the Ministry of Education to incur as the, its cost. So uh, the initial cost will, for infrastructure will be 7.9 billion, which is something that is affordable and it can be done if there is a commitment. And we're not asking for government to fund this project within a year or two, but it should be a long term. They should have at least a long term um, strategy and, in, uh, and or a plan that says at least we will phase in and we'll fund this project for a period of 10 years. And we'd, if they do that, they would at least spend about a billion or two each and every year in, in the period of 10 years. So it, is, it can be done. And what makes libraries so important specifically for South African learners? Many of the children that I'm talking about and the schools that we, we're talking about, they are situated in rural and township areas. And many of the, the kids that we are dealing with um, the majority of the kids in South Africa are not able to, to read peacefully or do their homeworks at, at home because there isn't such a space where they can sit quietly and read. So a library is a perfect place for them to just do their homeworks and also being helped by the librarian. What is happening in the Western Cape at this moment, in Kailicha, my cousin has to um, travel from Kailicha to Cape Town and she spends 12 rand to travel to Cape Town for just to access the central library in Cape Town. And this is not only happening in Cape Town in Kailicha, it is also happening in my grandmother's rural area uh, in Madliki, where, where she used to stay. She had to travel from the rural area uh, in Madliki to King Lewemstown and go to uh, um, the, the central library in King Lewemstown. So it, it, is co it is costing the working class uh, more for them to access public facilities 
that do have information and that will give them more knowledge than it does for our rich and um, people who can afford to to spend that kind of money. So in, instead of them spending the 12 rand for food or loaf of bread, they now have to spend it on traveling. And that is only, I'm only talking about someone who can actually afford to travel once in a week on a Saturday, because during the week, uh, you, the school finishes at three and you only have two hours to travel from Kailicha to um, Cape Town and it will take you an hour to take a train or a taxi to Cape Town. It is not fair for South Africa to do this to, their, to, to its own children and it is not fair for us to stand by and do nothing whilst we know this is happening and we are not calling anyone to look into this. We're not calling the government to, to, to deal with this issue as an urgent matter. And also business should also take charge of this. They should also partner with government. They should partner with schools and not only focus on the schools that do have, but also go to schools that do not have um, and provide for such uh, funding um, to those schools. What do you think needs to be done to make equal education a reality? In South Africa, we have inherited um, the apartheid uh, legacy, the inequalities that were perpetrated by, were done by the apartheid government. And what we have done as South Africa post-94, we said, we have democracy and our parents think that we actually do have full democracy and our freedoms, but we actually do not because most people are still suffering and they, it's so hard for them to even exercise basic human rights. For example, right to sanitation, right to water and right to basic education. And in order for us, to, um, to reach to a point where we access equal education, we have to deal with the issues of infrastructure of which we have not dealt with them. The education department had um, in the past two years thought of um, creating two policies on school infrastructure that deals with all the issues that I talked about, like for example, computer labs, science kits, um, water and sanitation libraries. But what it did, it stopped. It didn't adopt um, the policy. Um, it was supposed to be implemented by 2009 and be fully implemented by 2010. That didn't happen. And, and I think the government is doing this deliberately because they don't want to spend any of their money. And if we can afford to spend any of our money as a country to build stadiums, of which I think it's a good thing that South Africa is hosting this wonderful World Cup, then we can be able as well to lobby governments, to lobby, lobby um, the private sector and also take some of our money that we are spending in many of the things that uh, might be also necessary or probably unnecessary um, to commit ourselves in dealing with the school infrastructure issues in South Africa in order for us to, um, to deal with uh, the quality of education or improve the quality of education in South Africa. Thank you, Yuliswa. That was Yuliswa Dwane of Equal Education, discussing the group's campaign for school libraries.